Um, this graph shows the linear relationship between pressure change that's on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis, which represents whatever units are being measured. In this case, that span of temperature is up to 100 degrees. So what we also want to point out here is that you need to pick the right transmitter for the proper application. With a temperature range of 0 to 100, this specific transmitter would not be applicable for, for example, hot water, because the temperature of the hot water would always be more than 100 degrees. So we wouldn't get that temperature pressure relationship that we're looking for. If you're doing hot water, we'd have to pick a different uh, transmitter for that application. This 0 to 100, this might be applied in many, many things like um, a chill water application or perhaps uh, measuring outdoor air temperature. Next. Yeah, let's just reiterate a couple of points on the transmitters. Transmitters are sens sensors only. Uh, almost all of them are direct acting. All have the same output range of 3 to 15 PSIG. The same output span, always 12 PSIG. There are no adjustments. You cannot adjust these in the field. Models for both temperature, pressure, and humidity. Wes? Um, just that the uh, reiterate, the transmitters uh, can be fed main air either from the receiver controller or it can be done remotely. And you want to, in the field or when troubleshooting, know where that restrictor is. Generally, you start at the controller and see if that restrictor is feeding the transmitter or the restrictor is blocked within the, uh, within the receiver controller. And you should be trying to find that restrictor somewhere else out in the field. There are, some, are also manufacturers, uh, the Robert Shaw units, they don't allow a restrictor inside of the controller. So you always have to have a remote uh, restrictor. So there's different rules that need to be followed for the especially receiver controllers. But the transmitters, generally across the board, can be shared in uh, applications. So Johnson Controls can be used. Uh, Johnson Controls transmitters can be used in a Honeywell application or in a Honeywell uh, in conjunction with the receiver controller. Next. Whoa, excuse me. Hit the wrong button. I apologize for that. We have to, there we go. We're at um, the, uh, yeah. Yeah. Bulb units are, this is typically what we wanted to show you, what a T5210 temperature transmitter looks like, and very other brands are very similar. Bulb units are small, used in small ducts to monitor air temperature or used with a well to monitor fluid in a pipe. Averaging elements are used to monitor temperature across a large air handler or duct where temperature can vary. Output flow is 45 skims. Um, this just happens to show a B bulb uh, with a short capillary. There will also be averaging elements that can be quite long, sometimes 20, 30 feet, that are just look like that capillary and can just be strung out and go back and forth to try to get take care of stratification. And Wes will talk more about that. Thanks, Wes. Yeah, two things. Uh, one, looking at the picture without the cover there, the round circle thing that looks like almost like a silver dollar made out of brass, that's the temperature sensitive element. That represents a bellows where that expands and contracts uh, much like a bimetal, but it, it's not a bimetal. So it doesn't look like a bimetal. So you don't necessarily see the same kind of temperature devices in uh, across the board. Averaging elements, as um, discussed there, can be up to 20 feet long. And they're meant to be spread across a coil or ductwork to allow uh, for the stratification that takes place in ductworks. Uh, typically, hot air would rise. Typically, cold air would uh, fall. So uh, in the case where we want to know the resulting temperature of that, let's say, cold outdoor air and warm return air, uh, when it gets down the ductwork, we would use an averaging element to look at the temperatures across the ductwork and give us uh, the resulting temperature. Uh, also, in the case of freeze protection, we can use a, for example, 20-foot element and string that across the uh, coil so that freeze uh, protection looks at the coldest portion of the coil to allow shutdown of the equipment and prevent uh, freezing of coil. 
you know, this gives you uh, just a list of some of the Johnson Controls models and how many different variations there are. I know Wes had quite a few comments on this, I believe. Well, the, um, the one column that I like to point out is the operating temperature column. You can see the first one there says uh, 50 to 100 degrees. Uh, the fourth one or so says 0 to 100 degrees. And two-thirds of the way down the chart, you see one that's 40 to 240. So as we mentioned before, the transmitter is chosen based upon the conditions of where it is installed. Uh, proper room transmitters are typically 50 to 100 degrees. We've discussed uh, 0 to 100 can read outdoor temperature or non-heated water, and something that's 40 to 240 can read hot water temperature. But these three represent spans, or, uh, or we call them spans, of 50, 100, and 200 degrees. And this relates to how sensitive the specific transmitter is. That span of 50, 100, and 200 are also used in the calculation along with the throttling range to determine what's called the proportional band. And that's used to calibrate the controller. So when we get to uh, uh, calibrating a controller, we're not so, looking, not, not so much looking at the high and low temperatures uh, as called the operating temperature there, but rather the difference between the high and the low. So in the first case, the difference between the high and the low, 100 minus 50, is 50 degrees. So that's the span of the transmitter. Next. Yeah, we're going to now show you some other types of uh, transmitters. This happens to be a room transmitter. This can be used for space or mass sensing. Space sensing means the unit is surface mounted and is measuring the temperature of the air. Mass sensing means the unit is concealed, mounted in the wall, and is measuring the temperature of the wall and the surrounding space. This looks just like a thermostat, but notice there's no dial. And be careful, this one, you shouldn't be adjusting the sensitivity in the field. Wes? As shown on the previous slide, uh, these room transmitters are typically in the 50 to 100 operating range. And the 100 minus 50 is a 50 degree span. And it's, it's the smallest of the spans, and therefore a very sensitive uh, type of device. When you took the cover off this, you would know it's not a thermostat because there's no place to set the uh, set point at. And there's only always only one airline uh, going to the device. Next. Yeah. Next one is a pressure transmitter. This can be used in high or low pressure applications. Um, there are even some bi-directional models available. It can be used for water or steam or air pressure applications. Looks very similar to what we've seen before, but the air conduction is now on the bottom and replaces that sensing copper bulb element and is just a 1 8 inch NPT air connection. Wes? Just to clarify, actually, the air connection for the air to the transmitter is at the top of the unit at that right. barbed connection. The bottom connection there, that's the pressure connection. Correct. Or so if you're looking yeah. at air pressure, that would be there or steam or whatever yeah. uh, condition that's being measured. To be that's air connected water. to that female NPT. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK, <laughs> now we're going to go to the differential pressure transmitters. These include duct sensing, clean room sensing, level sensing, variable air volume, constant regular applications, uh, many different types of ranges available, both positive, negative, or bidirectional. These happen to have four airlines. These happen to have both the supply and output, so there'll be no separate restrictor. And then they have two additional inputs, and there's going to be a high and low sensing lines that are going to go to PIA tubes or some other method of measuring the differential pressure that you desire. These typically come in anywhere from 0 0.5 inches of water differential, uh, that's the full span, all the way up to about approximately 5 inches of differential pressure full span. Wes? Uh, as mentioned, the airlines uh, run out two pitot tubes in the ductwork to measure duct pressure. And that pressure is relayed to the controller in a 3 to 15 PSI signal, which represents at any given time the present conditions in the ductwork. Next slide. 